see you in the house in this sacred place today. We come to give Him glory and we come to give Him praise. Our God has been faithful to us. He has been better to us than we deserve. Come on, put your hands together. We can't let nothing stop our praise or our worship. Can I get an amen? amen. I've been around all week. I've spent close to a thousand dollars trying to get all this stuff set up so I don't have to move cameras around. Work fine until 11 o'clock. Hallelujah. My God. It will be all right in the morning. It will be all right in the morning. No matter where you're going, no matter what you're going through, it's going to get better. Glory to God. I just want to welcome you here on today. Good God, you may be seated, saints, in the presence of the Lord. It's a good uh, and powerful thing for the saints to come together and lift up the name of Jesus together. It's good to see so many of you. I looked out in the audience and I saw Sister Osi there. I said, my God, today. I'm encouraged, I'm encouraged from the saints, Sister Lucy Bell, Sister Mark, and others that start easing back into the house. I'm, we try to make it as safe as we can for you, amen? But no matter what we do, we need you to know that God has his hand on you, and his will will be done, amen? Amen, we trust you. Lord, let me, let me uh, ask if there are any announcements on today. I don't know if this is no announcements on today. Amen. I want to say to you, uh, uh, be aware that we will be on Facebook Live Wednesday uh, for a ninth hour word. This is a ninth hour ministry, a ninth hour word. A ninth hour word uh, for from 6.30 to 7, for 30 minutes. Amen. After I pray on the front and on the rear end, we're talking about 20, 25 minutes. And God has been really blessing us in those few moments. Amen. Uh, you need to catch some of what God is saying to us in those 30 minutes. So all you got to do, uh, don't get messed up by this stuff. Just write on Facebook for 30 minutes at 6.30 while you ride in your car, coming from home. Uh, just, just tune in. You don't have to look at the screen. Uh, you just come for the word. Amen. 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 From the little house on the prairie, we are broadcasting. A powerful word from God. Not my word, not my thoughts, but God is speaking to us. And so I want to encourage you uh, to be with us. The next thing I want to say is that uh, really starting next Sunday, we're going to try to have this up. Uh, the reason I've got all this, to have all this stuff going on is I want to have people moving cameras. I can just switch back and forth. Uh, for those that are still watching by Facebook Live, instead of a side court view of us, we want to do that. If we want to do something for God, we want to do the very best that we can. Amen. Uh, it's, it's no use in great amount of time if God has blessed us and kept us for us to produce shoddy, halfway work. Amen. And so uh, whatever whatever it takes, we're going to make it work. We're going to get it together. So, And I'm praying that God's going to send somebody that's going to take it out of my hands and, and, and have a love to do it. So uh, that's going to happen. So uh, I'm saying I like to say this on next Sunday the Wi-Fi in here is going to be password locked. Now the reason that's being is that usually when you come in all your phones will switch over to to the Wi-Fi, but these things work off the Wi-Fi. And so uh, if a lot of people are using the Wi-Fi, then the people at home the signal starts buffering and dropping and all those things. So we're going to lock you out. So you're going to have to use your own data, amen, if you want to play games while the service is going on. Amen. That's God. Amen. Amen. Well, the hour coming now is for the two worship of us worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Your feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Would you stand with us all over the house? 
as we sing our little theme song this morning, simple song that simply says, welcome, welcome. And as the choir leads us, let us sing together and welcome the Holy Spirit that he might know that he's welcome in this place. Song says, welcome. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen my heart. 
wait, I say, on the Lord. Can you say amen? Now the call is coming. We got one for
My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The uncle shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Put your hands together. Give God a praise to you. Minutes, so hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to try to move, but I'm, I'm just excited about what God is doing. Despite what we see, He is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Go with me very quickly back over to, to uh, Psalms 27. Amen. Amen. Psalms 27. Uh, it's teachable moment. Uh, this is teachable moment time, and and I and I know that teachable moment. I use that uh, to teach something about our giving. Uh, I'm gonna digress because I got this thing pushing me, um, uh, and it so fits in with what God wants to say in the message today. But I want you, I want you to get this. We back in Psalms 27. I want you to go down to verse 13 and 14. Very familiar passage of scripture. The psalmist says. I have fainted, I would have fainted, unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then he tells you how to hold on. He says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart, not, not, my, not my arm, not my back, not my chest or my legs, but my heart, my soulish man, my mind. Wait, I say on the Lord. Now, now. Uh, I want you to get this piece. The psalmist says, I would have fainted. Yeah. It's an indication that what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with, is so difficult that I, I almost faint. Matter of fact, I would have fainted. Uh, uh, not not, not the, the fallout faint, but I would have threw in the towel, gave up, walked away. Uh, 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 forget about it. He said, I would have. He said, that there was nothing in the situation that kept me from fainting. There was something that I knew. Something that I believed. Something that I was aware of. He says, I'm aware that God's going to bless me in the land of the living. Y'all not hear what I'm saying to you. That, 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 watch this. this. This is not sweet, low, sweet cherry. This ain't that. This ain't that. This ain't, uh, this is not uh, uh, all God's children got shoes. This is not that. This is where I'm living and what I'm dealing with. God's going to bless me right here. Y'all yeah. hear what I'm saying? So the psalmist says, he says, he says, uh, I would have seen. Look at what he says. He said, unless I believe something. Not just hope something, not just wishing for something, but I believe that I was going to see the goodness of the Lord in the right where in my house and my town in my state in my nation in this world. I believe I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord right where I am. Now watch this. Then he says, "Wait on the Lord." That piece right there will mess you up. Unless you just do uh, go back and get the original language of the word. He's not saying fold your arms and sit still. He's not saying that. You got to stay busy. You got to stay in the effort. You got to stay engaged. You got to stay committed. But he says wait. But Pastor Garland, you're saying, he's saying wait and you're saying stay in the fight. No, what he's saying to you, the word literally means cast away. Let go. Wait a minute. He's not just talking about letting go of the problem. He's saying, I want you to let go of wrestling with it on your inside. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. Have you ever been? See, I've been watching the news and I'm seeing my brothers like my sons being shot down. And while little white boys walk around with M M M M15 and walking in the midst of it and they don't even ask him nothing. I, I see that. And I'm a history major and it looks like we're going back to the same time of Jim Crow. And you can 
shoot us down and nobody asks some questions. There's a boy paralyzed laying in the bed for me, shot in the back seven times, and they 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 shackle him to the bed. That's something right there. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I get upset about that, and I know I can't get up in the front of God's people and say, boy, we need to go out and throw a brick through something. I can't say that, but I'm wrestling with it, can't sleep at night. And then I remember this verse, and God said, I want you to stay engaged. I want you to stay committed, but you quit wrestling with it. You quit being told about it. You be, quit being upset. Be engaged. Get a plan to move. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? You got to have a plan to move forward. I got a plan to things get better. And this, watch this. This is in every area of my life. There are some things that happen that we got to change course. But baby, don't change course without a plan. Have a plan. Be committed. I'm going this way. That's where I'm going. This is how I'm going to get there. This is how I'm going to make it. Y'all not here. What I'm saying is if we're going to move, you got to have a plan. Can't be just mad. So he says, wait. The word means forsake, throw away, cast out. Yes. Don't mean sit down. God says, you're wrestling with something that I'm going to take care of. Mm. God says, I'm going to handle this. And David, watch this, had such a relationship with him that when the water was over his head, I like that song by the brother that says, uh, he, he's, he made it for his wife. Well, what's his name? He's a secular singer. He says, I'm underwater, but I'm breathing fine. <laughs> John, John Lesley. Yeah. I like that song. That song. Yeah. I'm underwater. But the lie is he must not be underwater. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you're underwater, you need some, you need some help. You need some help. And, and what the problem is, we've seen so much we're underwater. And we want to fool ourselves. You're not breathing fine. And you're mad. And you're upset. Amen. And there's some things that you've got to engage and trust God with. And then there's some things that God trusts you with. Amen. Now, you don't have to worry about God taking care of God's part. That's right. When failure shows up, it's because you didn't take care of your part. Do you know what a covenant contract? We don't have a we don't have a guarantee with God like like uh, well the Holy Ghost the word of use given to us as a guarantee. But we don't have that a contract with God. We've got a covenant with God. Covenant agreement. Which means that both parties are engaged. Amen. Amen. There's something that you got to do. And God got to do. I've got a, I've got a contract with uh, G. Yes, sir. They said within so many miles, uh, if the engine blows up, we'll replace it. But you've got to get this done at certain intervals. That's right. Now, if I don't change the oil and let it run out and just drive and blow up within 12 miles, they're not going to fix it. Right. Because they're not a fool. That's right. Neither is our God. So, so there's some things that we've got to take care of. So quit wrestling over stuff that you need to say, Lord, I've done my part. I know that you're going to do your You don't have to ask him when. You have to be like the song. He said, I'm going through, but I'm not going to faint. Because I believe God's going to show up. Can you say amen? amen? Now, I know that don't help you with giving, but it ought to. That's your part. See that transition right there? That's your part. Our part is to be faithful and obedient, to be cheerful givers. And listen, I never beat you over the head about giving, and even those that are listening and watching on Facebook, we want you to support the ministry, not the pastor. I'm talking about the church. But more than that, I want you to be givers as you're obedient and you're grateful for what God has done. We are tied this year. We tithe and we give. Amen. But in all of our giving, we give as we purpose in our heart. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And it doesn't matter today if you sit in here and you say, I'm going to write a check for $5,000 or $10,000 and I'm going to give. And you're a big shot. It doesn't avail you anything. Hearts got to be right. 
Could, could we use it? Absolutely. We'll use it for the glory of God, but it don't, it don't prosper you. Amen. And so since I'm not the flim flam man, I want you to be the type of givers that when you sow a seed, it returns back to you. Watch this. You're never sowing into the ministry. People want you to believe that this is good soul. No, you sow to the kingdom, which is all good. Never give your finances to a person and what they're doing. And always give to God. I've had people come up and give me at conferences, want to give me money. But I make sure that they know they're giving to God. Give to God because Pastor Pauline, great amount of time, can't give you back. But he can. Ought to be some amen said. Amen. amen. Because you can send me all your bills and I can pray on them and your life is still be turned off. <laughs> we believe too much foolishness now. It's just foolishness. That's right. It's foolishness. Okay, I'm going to go one step further. I know I'm already out of time. Can I go one step further? You can tithe faithfully and then spend all your money at the mall. You still broke. That's right. <laughs> this, 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 this is not no get out of jail free car. We give because we owe God. We give because we're grateful to God. And then God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out opportunity. The truth is, most of us got more than we need. That's how come our blood pressure is high. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I know I'm not the only one that, that, that had to buy new pants. Amen. Let my suit out. Amen. Amen. What time is it? What time is it? Put your hands together and give God a praise if you can. The trustees are coming in the choir singing. It's time to give to our God.
It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray that we say, Amen. And amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, brothers. Do you? 
It's another thing to say, I trust God. Because the devil believed God. But to trust God, you've got to walk on thin ice. You've got to be able to be a water walker. You've got to be able to trust God when you can't trace it or track it. Trusting God. Trusting God when it don't feel right. Trusting God when you feel like you can't go another step. Trusting God when you want to cry, where are thou? How come you didn't come and help me? You feel much like uh, Mary and Martha. If you would have been here, I wouldn't have had to go through all that I went through. And this place is where miracles happen. When you look in the Bible, you'll never see a miracle performed without a couple of things. Somebody that trusts God, able to communicate with them, and two, that they are in dire straits. It, it is almost like the psalm we read. He said, I would have fainted, except I believe that I would see. My situation is terrible, but I believe that God's going to turn it around. And, and we are, we are, we are, don't hurt me too bad Christians. Uh, we don't mind a little bit of rain. We don't mind a small storm. But when all hell breaks loose in our lives and we are not sure what's going to happen next, we start looking to all kinds of places for help. But when you trust God, you are standing and I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to stand right here. I'm not looking for nobody else. I'm looking for God to show up. I trust in you. And when people tell you that you're trusting in vain and that's foolishness and I wouldn't do that if I was you. You've got to know in whom you believe. Now here's another problem. The other problem is it's hard to believe in God when the hell breaks loose and you didn't communicate with him and get to know him when things were good. See, we're, when we're comfortable, we forget to pray. Oh, stop, stop. Some of y'all didn't pray all this week. Just stop, stop. Some of you, your Bible is in the car. So you'll have it when you get to church. Some of you done done away with that Bible curled up in the back window of the car because now you got a little thing on your phone. And you got it on the phone and you got it in the car, but you don't have it in your heart. You're in trouble. Because you can't make it off of what the pastor said. You can't make it because mama loved God. You can't make it because grandmama and daddy love God. You got to know him because the war that comes in your life is going to be your war and can't nobody fix it but God. Go through some things. You go through some things. And so that there is a there is a character that you need to have. There is a relationship that you need to have. Because miracles come at the most desperate times in our lives. Nobody gets a miracle just because they say, Lord, I need you to work a miracle for me. I, I, I don't feel too well. I, I need you to fix this for me. You no, know, you wait until you are in dire strength, and then, watch this, then you only get it if you trust God. We trust in God. It's too many people telling us that all you've got to do is turn around in a circle three times and hop on one leg and say Jesus three times and things are going to be better. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Let, let me go. I'm going to go right back down this street one more time. All them folk telling you that, that you need to send, send your money to them and, and God's got a miracle. It's coming in the mail. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Y'all need to quit letting folk lie. Just because they on TV, don't make them tell them the truth. Let me get back. Let me get off of that. That's not where I want to go. I want to talk about just for the next five minutes, just five minutes. I'm not going to even unpack it. I want to talk about Daniel's character. Now watch this. Daniel was not 
Uh, Pastor Jackson, by the way, makes it real clear. Uh, uh, he wasn't in a lion's den. Because you can be in a lion's den and ain't no lions in there. He was in a den of lions. Let me, can I go ahead and push that a little bit further? This is not a fairy tale. This is a historical retelling of a factual event. Daniel, a man in a den of hungry lions. Yes, yes. Daniel tells us, watch, he says he came out with no harm because in the miracle moment he kept believing God. When they let him down, surrounded by hungry, ravenous lions, he kept believing God. He never changed how he believed God. Let me help you with this. On Wednesday, I need you to see this clear. In chapter 5 of Mark, you find Jairus. His daughter is dying. One of his men come and say, don't trouble the master any longer because your daughter is dead. Jesus says, fear not, only believe. Watch this, I'm trying to tie this together. That your belief must last when it seems there's no reason to believe. Yes. That, that, that means when the sheriff department comes and put the foreclosure notice on your house. That means when the doctor says that what you have is carnal. That means when there's the lawyer's written on the line and the judge has decreed that the force is final. All of these things that happen in our life that we struggle with, listen to me, you've got to still believe some way, somehow, God's going to work it out. Jairus had to walk from this place. He's still a hundred yards from his dead daughter and while he's walking with Jesus, right. he has got to believe right. what Jesus said. Yeah. He had faith enough that he would heal her. Now you've got to have faith enough that he can raise her. Wait a minute. I'm Daniel. I'm serving God. Because I'm serving God, people hate me. They are envious of me. They play a plot for me. And they try to kill me. And they put me in a den of lions. And all the while, they're judging me and threatening me with that death. I still hold on to my integrity. I say I trust God whether I live or I die. Because miracles don't just happen. And I'm talking to somebody who is at the end of the road. Yes. Yes. I can't take it anymore. Let me go ahead and preach to me because I'm wrestling with the foolishness that I see in the house and outside the house and the love for my people. I'm messed up by it, but I've got to have faith that God will in this miracle moment make a way. He will do it. He will do it. He will make a way. And so Daniel held on to his integrity. Daniel didn't give up his integrity. Verse 5, then these men, then said these men, Daniel chapter 6 verse 5, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of God. I got to go. So his integrity. Watch this. You can't be saved and walk like a fool and, and, and act crazy and do all the crazy stuff that they're doing in the world and then expect people to honor you and your God. Can I say something to you? You don't just represent you. I'm Pastor Colin. I don't just represent my family, my sons. I don't just represent this house. I represent God. And I got to carry myself in such a way. There's certain things you're not going to catch me doing because I represent God. You represent God. And so there has to be some integrity in your life. I, my word has got to be true. I can't do everything, but if all that I say that I can do, I should do. 
Listen, listen, listen. You might catch me riding down the street with all the windows down in my Jeep. And cooling the game play. Come on now. OJs. Kemp's. You're not gonna head it away. <laughs> because Pastor Colin, uh, I like a little jazz. A little Luther uh, Landross. But there's certain things that will mess with my integrity. If I pull up next to you and every other word that's burning out is a four-letter word, you say, what, 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 what's God a preacher say? Listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. You have to have, Daniel had integrity with men and with God. It's one thing to come here and say, I'm saved and God, I love you and I preach it. Then I see you on the parking lot out there like I had seen cussing folk out. Let me stop. Let me move. So Daniel, Daniel had integrity with God. Not only had he integrity, but he was steadfast. Verse 10 says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he still went and prayed. He did like he'd done before. You, you, you got to be steadfast. Even when people have been trying to entrap you because of your God. Watch this. Even when there's a case of you losing your job for doing what's right. You can always tell who your God is. Amen. By what you do. He was steadfast. He said, I go and pray three times. This is what I do. I talk to God. I got a relationship with God. This is what I do. Let me tell you, uh, you don't have to do it that way, but you have to be steadfast with God. You have to have not only integrity, but you got to be steadfast. You can't let people, uh, you can't let money, let me put it that way, stop you from being who you are with God. That's right. Amen. You'd be amazed how we sell our soul. How, oh, let me stop. Let me stop. And so, uh, because of his integrity and because of who he was, he suffered. Daniel was about 80 some years old. He had been under three kings. And when it came uh, this time for him to be thrown in the, the lion's den, many of you would have cursed me reading things. He's a young man, but he's an 80 year old man. They, they, they've been in bondage. He went to Babylon and. He was under Nebuchadnezzar, and now he's under the series, King Darius. Uh, he's been under three different kings. He's been there forever. Watch this. Been in bondage forever. Most of his life. Yet he held to his integrity. He was steadfast. And when the miracle moment, I'm done because I'm out of time. When the miracle moment came, God delivered him. Watch this. The king came to him. The very king. I need you to read the story. Because the men came to him that had set Daniel up, and they said, uh, uh, you know, you can't break the law. You can't break the law, and, and so uh, you got to throw him in. The king didn't want to. He was going to let him off. The Bible says that the king went and had a put in the dead lines. And it said that he, the king he fasted all night. Sleep went from him. He didn't allow him to play music in front of him. He got up early in the morning, ran to the den, and said, oh, Daniel. God whom you serve continually, was he able to save him? You know what Daniel's first word was? It says there for you. He says, O king, live forever. Can I tell you how you can tell when a miracle moment has happened and people that trust God, when the very person that tried to kill you, you just bless him. Let me tell you when you go through a miracle moment. See, a lot of us want, we want, the, we want this great healing. We want the water to stand up. We want lightning from the sky. But when God worked a miracle as he worked in some of your life, it's when people have abused you and lied on you and cheated you and God has fixed your heart that when they come around, you can't do nothing but bless them. God bless you. God keep you. You're not envious. You're not mad. Boy, I just want to say, oh, King, live forever. I mean, this is a powerful thing to be thrown in danger, to be messed over, to be mistreated. And then the very one that did it to you, when they come to you, you ain't got nothing but glad tidings for them. Lord, you work a miracle in my heart. The miracle moment. All of us are in it. The Bible says the reason that Daniel came out unscathed 
is simply because he believed God. All God did was shed the miles of the line. And when you read that, I'm out, I'm out of time, you'll find that the king took the very people that tried to kill them, put them in the same den. And before they could get the bottom of the den, lines were breaking the bones. Need them. The very enemy that comes to destroy you, you don't have to raise your hand against it. Bless you. God will fix it for you. What, what was the last miracle that you experienced? See, what was the last moment that your heart was so broken that you didn't think it would ever be? What was the last moment? What was the last thing that happened in your life that you didn't think you would ever get over? But God fixed it. My mother, my mother is you know, dead and gone. When she was a young woman, uh, she married a man and uh, had several children. And then, you know, he left her to burn down the house. Can't believe my older, what people call my ass, but my older brothers and sisters with her parents. And she, she left the country of Mississippi and went to New Orleans and was working in a Laundromat. She said she was walking down the street crying. She couldn't believe that this thing happened to her. She was talking to God about her situation. And you have to understand how women were back in that day. You really didn't have no power at all. She said the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, Sure, if I Bless him. Don't you know I'll bless you? Wait a minute. She said that ease her. She said when she had to walk through it, it was hard, but she kept believing God. She kept walking. And one day she walked up on my father. Wait a minute. She told my father her story. My dad looked at her and said, well, he burnt the house down, but I'm going to build you another. Right. You have to know that God will work a thing in your life if you can endure going through what you're going through. I know it's difficult and you want to give up and you want to quit. You want to just lay down and die, but keep going, baby. Don't stop because at the end of your journey is a miracle waiting for you. Can you endure it? Set on your feet and give God some praise if you can. Come on and give him some praise. I'm going to endure to the end. I'm going to endure till the end. No matter what we're going to as a people, if we can just endure, there's a miracle. Every head bowed. Father, I thank you now for who you are. I thank you, Father, for this moment together. Lord, I pray now for those under the sound of my voice. I'm praying right now for those who last single one thing or another. No matter how hard you try, it don't seem to work out right. No matter how great the sacrifice, you never seem to get the reward. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, now that you hear my voice. And Lord God, I lift him up all over the house. I'm asking, Father, that you would give him a peace that passes all understanding. And then, Father, I'm asking that you would give him strength. And you said, he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. And Father, I want to endure this. Help them to endure their miracle moment. There's a blessing at the end of their tears. There's a blessing at the end of the struggle. There's a blessing for them, Father, at the end of the road. And Father, I'm asking that all that they do is just trust me. And Father, I'm asking that when they stumble and fall, that you will lift them back up. Call in the name of Jesus. 
And then, Father, I'm asking that you would bless this house, that we would be a place of healing and deliverance where your children can be set free. Help us to do the work, Father. Father, send us where you want us to go. Move in the midst of your people. Bless them with your presence. Now, my Father, as we prepare to leave this moment, we pray for traveling mercies and grace. And we arrive at our final destination to find it safe and secure. I pray, Father, as always, that we let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, all the saints of God would say.